<laughs> I'm so excited. I'm about to watch one of my favorite horror show hosts, Lord Blood Raw, and his nerve wracking theater. <laughs> but I have a bonus. I can watch it in 8D. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, come join me and my friends, won't you? <laughs> Lord Blood Raw. Lord Blood Raw. Lord Blood Raw. Lord Blood Raw. Lords and ladies, geeks, geekerellas, geekulas, and geekeritas. I am Lord Bloodraw, and this is Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Theater. Skiing, crime, stolen gold, an old mine, and a monster. What am I talking about? I'm listing the ingredients for tonight's frosty, frozen confection of fear. Ha <laughs> ha! Tonight, from 1959, it's the snowy creature feature, The Beast from Haunted Cave. <laughs> now, tonight's film has all of the hallmarks of a Roger Corman film, but it actually isn't. It was produced by Roger Corman's younger brother, Gene Corman. But, rest assured, all of the Corman's skilled, low-budget filmmaking is on full display here. Ha-ha! <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, without further ado, I give to you a film that proves that not only does crime not pay, but it can also get you chased by a monster. Ha-ha! <laughs> Here is The Beast from Haunted Cave. Get your skis and meet me at the lift.
Not bad. Well, he whip it, you know. He always does. Always does what? Whatever he wants. Yes, sir, Mr. Alexander Wood is a very capable gent. Don't you uh, ever get thirsty? Not at 10 in the morning. Well, it was exactly at 10 a.m. that Mr. Martini invented the olive. That was terrific. Just terrific. Feels just like you're flying and you can keep on going forever. What a physically delightful idea. Sounds still ready? Still. Are you uh, ready for the Olympics yet? Gypsy, you really ought to try it. It's a brand new feeling. You mean I've missed one? Had enough for today? Yes, Gil. I'm expecting Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. They've been out seeing the sights. I hope the sights are tied down. Well, Mr. Jones and Mr. Smith want to take a lesson today? Yes, I think They'll probably be wanting to take one all night. Well, I doubt that. There's a cougar on a rampage in this area. I don't think I'd be frightened with you around. Mr. Jackson looks as though he could take care of anything, doesn't he, Alex? Happiness Lodge. Your place is well named, Gil. Thanks. I like it. Mighty hard place to get to, though. I like that, too. I bet you're hard to get to. Go, Gil. Hi, boss. Have a good time? Good enough, boss. Boy, this place is great. We went through a barn full of horses, and we took Polaroid pictures of people skiing and fishing. <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, we found a mine. Gypsy and I are going back to the lodge. I think it might be a good idea for you two to stay up here and let Mr. Jackson show you the ropes. So he'll need one to hold him up. They'd better learn if we're going to make that cross-country run tomorrow. Drop by the lodge later. I'd like to take a look at those pictures. Right, boss. Let's go, Gypsy. What are you trying to do? Make that yokel suspicious? Did I see something wrong, my sweet? Someday I'm going to shut that pretty little mouth of yours for good. Promises. Nothing but promises. Well, that's fine. Both doing very well. Oh, it's just a matter of practice. You'll get plenty of that tomorrow in the cross country. Listen, Gil, when you make that, that turn, how do you do that thing you, you told us about? Well, you've been doing pretty well. Yeah? It's a question of getting your weight distributed over the skis in the right way. Is it okay if I leave these here tomorrow? I'll wear the boots. That'd be fine. Is that your dog? Yes. He's half mine. Will he bite me if I pet him? No, he's very affectionate. Well, they say a dog always mirrors his master. Co-master. Oh, excuse me, co-master. What's your name? Jill. Well, how do you do? My name's Jack. <laughs> oh, really? No, I was only kidding. It's Marty. How long have you been here? All my life. No, I mean here at the ski shop. I started this year. You've never skied before? Oh, yeah, I've skied. Uh, I'm just, you know, kind of brushing up. <laughs> it's funny, every time I look at you, I smile. Hmm. Did I tell you I knitted this sweater? It's a great color. What is it? Cedar brown. Funky color. Will you knit me one? <laughs> You'll have to get in line. <laughs> I mean, the, you like to knit. Is that your scene? I like to do things with my hands. I'm going to take up painting when I get the nerve. So all you have to do is to start painting. But I don't know anything about it. Well, you don't have to know anything about it. All you have to do is to do it. Well, who knew anything when they first started painting? What if it's bad? Well, it's not bad or good. If it's what you like to do, do it. Really? I wish I had known that about six years ago. I wanted to do something, but I was afraid. You shouldn't smoke, you know. It's bad for your lungs. How, how old are you? <laughs> I don't like to tell. How old do you think I am? Twenty. Nineteen. How old are you? How old do you think I am? <laughs> Twenty-five. Twenty-seven. Uh, you're not married, are you? 
No. Would you like to have dinner? I don't know you. Have you got a boyfriend? No. I have to cook dinner every night for my brother. Well, that's okay. I'll give him a quarter to go to the movies. Hi, Jill. I see you met Mr. Jones. Call me Marty. Hi, Gil. This is my brother. Well, I think I better give him a buck. <laughs> I'm taking Mr. Jones and his uh, friends on a cross-country trip to the cabin tomorrow. We'll be leaving pretty early in the morning, so you and I will have to go over those orders tonight. Sorry, Jill. Sure, Gil. Jill and Gil, that's kind of cute. We don't have much imagination around these parts. But I guess Gil and Jill is about as original as Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. Attention, can we have another patrolman at the bottom of the number one chair right now? I'm sure everybody out there said, hey, it's that guy, when you saw Gil, the ski instructor. Well, the actor's name is Michael Forrest. And of over 200 roles he had listed on IMDb, I'm sure his most famous one to science fiction fans is that of the Greek god Apollo, from the original Star Trek TV episode, Who Mourns for Adonis? <laughs> That, of course, was a clip from the blooper reel for the original Star Trek TV series, featuring, of course, William Shatner as Captain Kirk. Michael Forrest must have a great sense of humor, and he sure knows how to wear a toga. Ha <laughs> ha! We'll be right back. <laughs> For two million years in these subterranean caves, a creature of superhuman evil was entombed in a wall of ice, waiting to be free, waiting to live again. Travel with us on a journey into a world where nightmare becomes reality. Telling me that an ape that lived two million years ago got onto that crate, killed the baggage man, and put him in there. Yes, I am. It's alive. It must be. Travel with us, if you dare, on the Horror Express. We'll search the train and find it, whatever it is, and destroy it. But if it's alive... I want this kept quiet. I don't want to panic the passengers. The malignant power of this creature is indestructible, transferring its force from mind to mind, from body body East is not dead I put four bullets into him you think evil can be killed with bullets Satan leaves the animal that you shot was only the host it's alive in someone on this train you saw his eyes one look at them and you're dead anything that moves near that door kill it <laughs> Run, run for your life. Hide, but you can't escape. No one can stop the fury and the terror of the Horror Express. From the depths of hell comes the Devil's Messenger, starring the master of mystery, Lon Chaney, and Karen Cannon. I can leave my messenger. 
You'd have to go back. Up there. Oh, I can't. I won't go back. You deliver that to a Mr. Donald Powell. Don't be afraid of me. The devil's messenger delivers gifts from hell, turning man into a ravaging beast. I took a picture of that old farmhouse. There's nobody in the picture. You saw it. Was there anybody in it? No, there wasn't. Somebody has come out of that house, and they're coming toward me. Back from the dead, his lovely victim seeks revenge for her horrible death at the hands of a man driven mad by a gift from hell. Trapped in her icy tomb until the devil's messenger exposed her nakedness in her crystal prison. Now let's get down to here. She becomes the object of a scientist's lust. His consuming desire for her drives him to commit murder to keep her for himself. Not since he received the apple have gifts inflicted such unnatural consequences. Tonight at midnight, you will be dead. Just how do you intend to kill me? I have no idea. I don't even know you. Crystal ball foreshadows June. For it is the plaything of the devil. And only he can change the events it foresees. <laughs> you must see what the devil's messenger has in store for you. Now back to The Beast from Haunted Cave, where we will find out the mysterious purpose for our photographers, Smith and Jones. Oh, give me a home where the wake lift is warm, where the rock and the rugged ones play. Pictures okay, boss? You could have gotten some more of the mine area. What's the vault like? <laughs> a cracker box with an iron door. <laughs> Fine. Well, boys, I think we got a classic going here. Marty, tonight you're going to go up and plant the charges in the mine, right? Right out. Tomorrow morning at 8.30, Gypsy is going to take the cowboy up on the ski lift to get him out of the way. At nine o'clock, the mine blows, and everybody runs to see the disaster. It'll look big. Then we move into the administration building, make the heist, grab the ski lift, and meet the other two at the top for the trip. Simple. Simple as you, my boy. So then we wait at Jackson's cabin till Tasser shows with the plane, right? Right. I think you're going to be all right. Good. Say, I need about $20 for supplies. Marty? I'd like you to reconsider taking this cross-country run. It's two days to the cabin. If anything happens, we're out of luck. Well, don't worry. If Byron breaks a leg, we can always shoot him. <laughs> Hi, Jackson. Did you get that cougar? Well, not yet, Miss Burlett. I I'll see you later. Won't you have a drink with us? Mr. Jackson has to get things ready for the trip tomorrow. We'd like to leave between 8 and 8.30. Is that all right, Gil? That's well, fine. I'll see you later. Do people like that really exist? Not for you, Charles. Not for me, Charles, because I'm with you, Sam. You said it, Jane. <laughs> little people enjoying their freedom. Go see do and around we go. What kind of freedom is that? 
They're all tied down to their petty little futures. Might be nice to have a future, even a petty little one. What's bugging you, Charles? Don't you like the setup anymore? Anymore has been a long time. What's wrong? Nothing's changed. Maybe I have, Charles. What's with your friends? They're spending. Scotch on the rocks, three bourbons with branches, one daiquiri and two gin fizzes. Hi, Gil. Hi, Natalie. I feel like a little dance. Just stay put, Charles. Oops. <laughs> Howdy, cowboy. Howdy yourself. Where's Natalie? She was here a minute ago. Come on, nature boy. I want to dance. What goes on behind that big silent face of yours? Nothing clever enough to interest you, I'm afraid. Well, we don't have to be clever all the time. I can talk about the important things, like uh, nature. What do you think of nature, Gil? I guess it's pretty natural. <laughs> do you have a girl? Two or three. Well, I don't think that's enough. Broken boot mine. Oh, yeah? Let's go take a look. Nothing to see this time of night. Besides, it's kind of spooky in the dark. And there's been this big cat around. Hmm? Well, this, uh, baby will take care of any little, uh, pussy cats. How come you pack a gun? Well, Gil Jackson told me about the cougar. Well, take a look. Come on. What are you going to do now? I've never seen a gold mine before. I want to take a look. Come on.
ball down there? Uh-huh. Is that pretty blonde woman your wife? Well, she's my boss's, uh, secretary. Oh, I get it. She sure can do her share of drinking. You sure can do your share of talking. few safety tips we can learn from that last segment. One, don't go into abandoned mines. You just, you don't know what's living in there. Two, don't go into abandoned mines with guys you just met. I mean, she didn't know that guy. She, she just met him. And three, don't go into abandoned mines with guys you just met who are carrying guns. I think that just goes without saying. Although, you know, if you just remember the first safety tip, you don't have to memorize the other two. Yeah. Just trying to make the world a safer place. We'll be right back. Vincent Price, and you're invited to my party in the house on Haunted Hill, where so far the ghosts have murdered only seven people. So won't you come and make it eight? You'll see human heads without bodies. Mysterious pools of blood dripping from the ceiling. The walls move slowly in against you. Don't try to escape, you can't. No. Are you ready, dear? Yes, damn you. The ghosts are waiting, so won't you join me in the house on Haunted Hill? Hurry, or you'll be late for your own funeral. serves drinks here. No. I used to be a dark-haired girl. I'm still serving. She was here an hour ago. Sorry, we can't help you. I can't even help myself. Be back in a minute. I'm not with you. Something go wrong? Come on, talk. I told you. I told you. You told me nothing. 
told you. Did you set the charges? At nine o'clock? Hey, what's bugging you? You killed that good-looking chick. What chick? Natalie. You mean the girl that works in the bar? You took that girl... I know all that. He took the barmaid to the mine and somehow managed to let her get knocked off. Knocked off? She's dead? The dark cat girl? I don't know. Maybe the cougar got her. It wasn't any cougar. I saw this thing and I saw this egg right down in the shaft where I planted the charge. Alex. Are you going to blow up that mine tomorrow? At nine o'clock. That means that you and Nature Boy will be at the top of the ski lift at 8.30. You're going to blow up that mine. Kill all those people. I like you're nothing but a mass murderer. Just for two bars of gold. Tomorrow's Sunday. Nobody works. You all set for the big adventure? You certainly look bright and shiny this morning. You expecting maybe a hangover? I'm certainly not a girl from a soap commercial. Good morning. Is it that time already? You were the one that said eight. I must have been out of my mind. I just checked on Marty and Byron. They're still out. Look, why don't you two going up to the ski lift. The boys and I will have breakfast and join you later. No last chance to talk you out of this? What are the state police doing way up here? Oh, Natalie, the cocktail waitress, took off last night. Hasn't been seen since. Oh, I see. Well, look, why don't you two get started and we'll join you in about half an hour, okay? Okay, we'll be there. Shall we all? We should be heading back. That's the way to my cabin. Looks cold and desolate. It is. Let's go.
we take more than six? Two apiece. That's all we can handle. Well, what do you think of me? What do you mean? Well, this is the first time you've seen me sober, isn't it? I'm paid to teach people how to ski, not to think about them. I'm always making scenes like that one last night. Don't you ever make scenes, Gil? I try not to. Well, you don't have to. You can go away to your cabin and burrow in the snow. Some people have all the luck. I think you make your own luck. I know you're wrong. Your luck makes you. I was your lucky once, and look what it did. You got a cigarette? Okay, so I understand the crooks blew up the mine to distract the police so they could steal the gold. But if you're trying to pull off a robbery and not draw attention to yourselves, shouldn't they have parked better? I mean, it only would have taken a couple of seconds to straighten that car out and get it in the vicinity of the curb. Not smart. Especially right in front of the payroll office. Let's see what else these crooks screw up after this. From ancient Genesis to the modern screen, is the name written in blood, Ega. If, if I could just call you on the phone, the code of the ghost has the sign of the toe. Nobody lives on the Brownsville Road. Thrill to the newest recording star, Arturo Jr. Oh, the scream in this way. See ravishing Marilyn Manning in a thrilling, chilling story. The last of the prehistoric giants sees his first girl. Noah. And Curious newsmen search deep in giant country for the last of the ancient cavemen. See a tough giant tamed by the soft hands of his captive woman. See him sacrifice his ageless beard for her love. They lose her to a boy in a dune buggy escaping a burning desert. Ega's primitive passion was love or kill. Here, Ega talk, the ancient language of love used at the beginning of time. Can you hear it? She can hear it. Can you? The screaming skull. The voice of the dead will haunt you. The screaming skull. And 
terror from the year 5000. The screaming skull. The maddening voice of the sightless dead. Horror that'll scare the skin off your bones. The screaming skull. And the blood-curdling terror from the year 5000. Now back to The Beast from Haunted Cave, where our gang of thieves, who are also terrible parallel parkers, are in the midst of their snowy getaway with the gold. Getting cold? I got 64% antifreeze in my veins. <laughs> you talk like a faded woman regretting a misspent life. Well... Uh... Do you go? Thirty. Thirty. You like to ski. You like to be alone. Things are about the same for you as they were ten years ago, right? Pretty much. Ten years ago, I was uh, sixteen. Ten million years ago. You must have done a lot. I've done everything. So I have my whole life ahead of me, and yours is all used up. Not quite. How comes the rest of mine on that chair lift? <laughs> Let's go. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. Are you sure you know what you're in for? This cross-country ski run is something I've been dreaming about ever since I was a little kid. When will you have a little kid, Charles? Everybody stick close and follow my lead. Okay, Gil. Here we go. to fix you up. Yeah, what? We need firewood. Ah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? We're being followed. What? I've been feeling it on the back of my neck all day. You need a haircut. Hey, you're getting pretty useless. <laughs> Don't laugh, Byron. That old tingling has saved many a trapper and prospector. Huh? Here's to be a whole tingling from an old prospector. What about that wood? Well, I said you, if I can get up here, the spirit's willing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, stay put. I'll uh, be back in a few minutes. And while I'm gone, you can start packing down the snow. Yeah. What's hitting you? Hey, you gotta forget that girl. I'm not thinking about her. Well, what are you thinking about? The thing that got her. Now, it saw me and it means to get me. And that's what's been following us. 
You're a bundle of cheer. You better snap out of it fast, smart boy. Yeah, sure. You know, day after tomorrow, Tash is going to come out here with a ski plane, and we're off to Canada to spread it loose. You knock off the funny talk with nature, boy. You can't stop me from talking. Don't tempt me. Why don't you turn in? I'll take the rest of your watch. Nobody takes my watch. I still got two hours left to go, and I don't want to be a burden on anybody. Finish your watch, and I'm going back to the sack. Anybody that wants to stand watch has got to be a cook. I'm going back to sleep before the next thrilling episode. Are you sure you're all right? I don't mind. I that. told you I'll take the watch. kind of tracks. I've never seen anything like it before. Must have passed through here during the night. You were on guard last night. What happened? Nothing you can handle. What kind of an answer is that? You were on guard all last night. Did you see something or didn't you? What I saw, you wouldn't believe. Look, I'm getting sick and tired of this. What did you see last night? Nothing. Maybe I can help you to remember. Oh, that would be nice. We could take turns sitting up with him and his friend. Come on, Alex, let's go. <laughs> Make it, Jill. 
It was mostly downhill. So what? What about the return trip? Well, it looks like a nice place. Maybe we'll stay. We should head back before dawn if we're going to make the campsite by nightfall. Tomorrow? Oh, isn't that the idea? Well, Gil, we're all a little tired. Couldn't we stay over a day and rest? That's fine with me. I'd like you to meet my... Help! Help! Massacre! It's you want him all! Help! <laughs> As I was starting to say, I'd like you to meet my housekeeper, Small Dove. How do you do, Small Dove? How do you do? You'll have to forgive my son. His head was run over by a horse last week. <laughs> what a maroon! Uh, I don't know if I have any cross-country skiers in the audience, but um, I'd like to ask you a question. Everybody stick close and follow my lead. Okay, Gil, here we go. Here we go. Is cross-country skiing really fun? I don't know. I mean, it looks like something you'd be forced to do to escape a natural disaster or survive in a frozen apocalypse. Doesn't look like a fun way to spend a weekend to me. Although, look what I do with my weekends. Some folks would rather climb a frozen sheer cliff barehanded than watch some of the movies we've shown here. Well, to each their own. We'll be right back. Coming to this theater soon, The Beast of Yucca Flats. Filmed on the burning hot sands by Yucca Flats. See terror, panic, murder. See the Cardoza and Francis production of The Beast of Yucca Flats. See a man turn killer. See a woman ravaged. See one of the most exciting movies ever made. See The Beast of Yucca Flats. A killer on the loose. Death sweeps across the desert. Panic. A bloodthirsty killer stalks a moonlit desert. See The Beast of Yucca Flats. law, possessing weird and enormous powers, these strange teenagers from outer space invade the Earth and prepare to possess its women. Nothing can stop their deadly advance. Earthmen are no match for their superhuman powers. They blast the flesh off humans. A moment before, she was a beautiful young girl. Now, she's a skeleton. Time for chow. Say, Gil. Uh, tell me something. How much land you got here? Oh, about 20 acres. Does this uh, lake get pretty solidly frozen over? Yeah, it's pretty frozen. But I wouldn't try walking on it. <laughs> Say, Gil, how much, how much money can you make as a ski instructor? Well, you can't make as much money here as you could at a place like Aspen. I get by. Will you make enough money to live on and be happy? For sure. You can't base happiness on the amount of money you make. <laughs> well, I'm not knocking money, but well, there are other things. Besides, I got this property and the ski shop. Well, basically, you do pretty good, then. Yeah, it works out okay. And nobody's your boss. Well, 
Nobody tells me what to do, if that's what you mean. Well, don't you have to keep pushing? Or don't you feel like taking it easy? Well, I like what I'm doing. I think that's about as easy as you can take it. We better go on in. Small Dog's probably got dinner ready. I think I know why Byron eats like that. Why is that? He has to keep himself stuck to prevent his brain from slipping down his throat into his stomach. <laughs> now let's pause for a brief look at the news. The biggest story to hit the Black Hills since the murder of Wild Bill Hickok was Sunday's sensational robbery at the Broken Boot Mine in Deadwood. What? Authorities believe the bandits could not have left the vicinity by the single daily train and therefore must be hiding out somewhere in the area. Police also believe that the simultaneous mine explosion in which watchman Leonard Wilsey lost his life was in some way connected with the robbery, perhaps as a diversion. In a moment, the weather. Can you beat that? It must have happened right after we left. Yes, or we'd have heard about it. The weatherman says snow and heavy overcast for Deadwood and Lead all day Tuesday with strong winds Wednesday, possibly clearing Thursday. And now, back to Gil. music in a metal mood. Will the weather be the same here as it is in town? Just about. I hope it clears for the trip back. Better clear tomorrow. Why tomorrow? We're staying here, remember? What do you do up here on these long winter nights, Gil? Read, mostly. What kind of stuff? Sometimes I just flip open the encyclopedia. Something interesting on almost every page. Don't you ever have a yen to cut out and make the big city? What for? Well, it's living. Really? I went to San Francisco once. I was there for about a week. I think I saw just about everything there was to see in that length of time. Didn't like it? Oh, no, it was wonderful. But there's something about these mountains and trees, wind, it makes everything else kind of insignificant. Well, I guess it takes all kinds. It's your turn, mountain man. Man, man, mountain, 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 man, man, man. I think you're lovely. Everything over? Please forgive my outburst, Gil. I'm afraid I have a bad temper. I can't say much for any of you. You don't know how much trouble I've had from this broad. <sighs> nice going. Step out of line, cowboy. For the moment, you're a guest here. I'll thank you to keep your hands off, Miss Bullett. I'll treat my secretary any way I feel like it. You can keep your nose out of it. Unless you want a 38 caliber nose job. Where are you going? Be fun taking care of that joker. Nothing moves till the plane gets here. And I'll take care of myself. But if you're not doing anything, you can go outside and build a fire. Keep it going. Just in case that idiot Tasser tries to come in ahead of the storm. Gypsy? I 
strikes with a big try, Galahad. Fortunately, I do that sort of thing all the time. Alex had a perfect right to slap me. Maybe I'll kill him someday, but I can't blame him for being sore. Why don't you get out? That's what I keep telling myself. But I know I'll never have the guts. I've become part of Alex. Maybe a sick part, but a permanent one. What are you really afraid of? I was an underpaid model in a wholesale house. And I met Alex. He was young and loaded. I liked the way he pushed me around. I liked the... And now it's too late to go back. And I don't know if I really want to go back. I don't know what I want. But I know I'd rather have Alex than nothing at all. You're selling yourself short. Well, there's a law of supply and demand, mister. And I don't hear any bidders. Take it easy, huh? I'm sorry, baby. I'm not Florence Nightingale. Wait. Don't these backwood stations have any news during the night? Sure. Why are you so concerned with the news? It affects business. There's a threat of war. People stop buying fireworks. What's it to you? In a moment, the weather. Which leads them to believe they are still in the area. There are no further clues. On the weather picture, forecast is warned that the new low moving in from Canada will bring blizzards to portions of the Dakotas sometime before Wednesday noon. In other parts of the country... Blizzards. What's your worry? It might not come anywhere near here. Meanwhile, we can take it easy. Or are you in a hurry to get somewhere? What's that supposed to mean? Just a question. There you go. I'll fix that. Thanks, Chance. Huh? Hot milk and graham crackers. For me? You were very brave. Well, I guess any imbecile crook who likes hot milk and graham crackers can't be all bad. You can keep your nose out of it. Unless you want a 38 caliber nose job. But you know... I don't think you can shoot a gun holding it like that, unless you're trying to squeeze the bullets out like toothpaste out of a tube. I, I just don't think that's going to work. Oh, take it easy, Dracula. What do you think I'm carrying here, my dirty laundry? Where a 
man-eating, talking plant gives homicide something to think about. And I didn't do it. Do what? Whatever. Ever see this man? Man, see picture. Why are you so nervous? Oh, boy, you kiss good, Audrey. Oh, I guess I just have a good kiss, sir. Now you will do as I say. Yes, master. You will go out and find me some food. Yes, master. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Too bony. Too bony? Nobody ever told me that before. Beef is better than veal. Uh, you're such a dodo. What do you call this? Chopped liver? better. It was a pretty dumb stunt you pulled. I pulled it on my own time. What time? You've got a 24-hour a day job. Yeah. Well, my business with that baby outside is strictly personal. It's the most personal thing that's ever happened to me. So far. Any more questions? No. Take him to bed. How many people do you have working for you in Chicago? Well, about 200. Why? You must have quite a turnover. Good night. Sir? You won't try to make it with a storm coming up. Doesn't make any difference anyway. Let's take a walk. Work is a beautiful thing when somebody else is doing it. Try it sometime. Hey, give me the axe. You'll probably chop your leg off. Oh, it's a leg one way or the other. Oh, well, it wouldn't matter if it was just any old leg. You think you've noticed? Kill, I'm beginning to understand how you feel about this place. It's comfortable and warm. At night, I like to listen to the wind trying to get in. You think it ever will? Not while I've got two hands to hold it back. That is the manliest thing I have ever heard. Yo, they're going to kill you. You don't seem very surprised. No, I'm not. How do they figure to get out of here? There's a plane coming. It was due this morning. Probably delayed by the weather. Then we were going to go to Canada. We're going? I would like to stick around if you'd have me. I haven't really thought about it. Not true. Well, maybe not completely. Well, I didn't know anything about that killing until I heard it over the radio. You don't know me, and 
and I don't know you at all. You got it in your mind you want to return to nature, and I'm part of it. But what happens when you get bored? How do you know what I think? I don't know. I wish I did. I know one thing for sure. I'm sending Small Dove back to her relatives. Then I'm heading back to blow the whistle on your friends. If you still want to come along, meet me between 6 and 6.30 on the ridge where we first saw the cabin. small dove. Big vulture. Too bad we have to kill her. Why knock her off? I kind of like that hefty old squaw. Fantastic comes she goes. Along with Marty and the cowboy. Marty sure is flip. He's dangerous. Do you really think he saw something? <laughs> Yeah, pink snowman. <laughs> hey, boss, I found it. Found what? The cougar's cave. exotic geisha houses of Tokyo, to the back alleys of the Ginza Strip, comes the terrifying news of a fiendish creature that threatens to destroy all who stand in his way. This is the frightening story of an American reporter in Tokyo, who unwittingly became the victim of a shocking scientific experiment that turned him into a horrible mutant, half man, half monster, the Manster. Got away. I think I know where he's going. To Taurus. Follow me. Right. There's panic in the streets as the unheard of terror of a half man, half monster runs wild through the city. There he goes. Don't miss the monster. A genuine thriller in the most frightening sense of the word. Beautiful girls and one lone man struggling for survival. With death, sudden, violent, and horrible lurking in the shadows. Horrors of Spider Island. Out of the night came a fate worse than death. A man's mind twisted, his brain poisoned, with an uncontrollable lust to kill. Horrors of Spider Island. A tale of terror that will leave you limp. So hideous and shocking, you won't believe your eyes. His hunger for victims was never satisfied.
to be frightened out of your wits by the horrors of Spider Island. Now back to The Beast from Haunted Cave, where Gypsy weighs her options, Alex proves once and for all that he is not a nice man, and the oddly transparent monster returns. More than 50 people paid their last respects to Leonard Wilsey, who was tragically killed in the mine explosion last Sunday. And that's the news up to 5 o'clock. Where's Davy Crockett? He went hunting. Hunting at night? That's about four, hunting a deer. Venison? Sounds great. When was the last time we had venison, Alex? Well, about two years ago at the Key Club. At the Key Club? Hmm? Chicago. You can only afford venison on your birthday, Alex. Out here, all it takes is a sense of nature and a strong hand on the trigger. We're running off at the mouth tonight. Why don't you drink and get fractured? it would be normal. What did we do on my birthday that year, Alex? Your birthday? When is my birthday, Alex? Remember? Well, that year we spent my birthday in Florida. Pulled a bankroll robbery at the Miami Fireworks Company. Oh, yeah, I remember. Killed two birds with one stone. Got 150 grand and put the Southern competition out of business. Many happy returns. They're acting mighty peculiar tonight. What are we going to do after this job, Alex? Well, same things we always do. Why? I've got an idea. Why not retire? Retire? You're a rich man, Alex. You've picked the bones of a thousand boobs who happen to have enough money to catch her eye. You don't have to take chances anymore. Why not quit? Charles, I'm year living high because of it. I picked the bones of a thousand boobs, and I'll pick the bones of a thousand more because they are boobs, and they deserve exactly what they get. That old man deserved what he got. Every day, some old man steps in front of a car. I'll send flowers, but I'll never quit. Well, that's that. Here's a late highway warning. The west side of Strawberry Canyon Road is now closed and will be for at least another hour. Motorists are again warned not to drive unless absolutely necessary. I guess it is. expected to last through the night. And now a request for Mrs. Bertie Arnold in Deadwood from the Music Memory Album. Where are you going, Charles? For a walk, Charles. Follow it. Hey, boss, I just figured it out. It's Pa. What's Pa? Him against the wall. He's been driving me crazy. I get out of here. Sweetheart, I gotta follow. The boss told me to.
you mean that? I usually mean what I say. How do you know I'm not just trying to save my own skin? It's easier for you to tell Alex and let him finish me. It would have been easier, but it would have been impossible. We better get started before the blizzard. A long way back. If the basic story for tonight's movie seems familiar to you nerve-wracking theater viewers, uh, crook stealing gold, being confined in a small space, uh, the goofier of the crooks being romanced by a rotund native girl, all being vexed by a monster, if all of that seems familiar to you, there's a good reason for that. Tonight's film was written by brilliant screenwriter Charles B. Griffith who also wrote the Roger Corman classics Bucket of Blood, Little Shop of Horrors, It Conquered the World, and Death Race 2000. He also wrote Creature from the Haunted Sea. How much Jack you think's in that strong rock? I don't know. There's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. Here's what happened. The general beat his friend Castro to the Cuban treasury. The strong box is now on this boat. So are a deported American gangster and his mall. And lurking in the depths is the Creature from the Haunted Sea. Creature from the Haunted Sea, which came out two years after this movie, was a reworking of the script for tonight's movie from a monster drama into a more pure comedy. And both of those scripts were reworkings of a previous Charles B. Griffith script for a movie called Naked Paradise. Which I never saw. I understand there were no monsters in it, so why bother? We'll be right back. You've lost the urge to experiment. Every time you touch me, I go out of my mind. inspired him to try the impossible. I brought her back. She'll live and I'll get her another body. Yes, and what of her soul? How can you make of her an experiment of horror? His mad ambitions and desires threaten every woman possessing an attractive body. Girls whose measurements make them beauty contest participants. Professional figure models such as this. All are prey to his distorted desires. What's locked behind that door? horror no normal mind can imagine something even more terrible than you horror has its ultimate and i'm that behind that door is the sum total of dr cordner's mistakes he intends to kill somebody to rob them of their body we've got to stop him ah! Ah! Snap out of it, Byron. Snap out of it. I see that you gentlemen have changed your ideas about my eyesight. Shut up. It got small now. Well, maybe it'll be satisfied with it. Not by a long shot. It knows who it's after. We're going to do so. We'll do nothing but stay put. It hasn't tried to get into the cabin yet. As a matter of fact, it ran from us. It didn't run from us. It ran from the fire that Byron threw at it. Well, it doesn't make any difference what chased it away. We're, we're, we're out here on a job. We can't afford to have any nightmares. Okay, okay. I never saw such an animal. 
What is it? I saw pieces of an egg in the mine where it got Natalie. Now that could have been buried there for millions of years until the men working on the, the mine prophet. found it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it chews up the whole state. I don't care if it came from Mars or happened by spontaneous combustion. We're going to Canada with a load of gold, so forget it. It'll get us. It'll get nothing. You got small dove. Probably get Gypsy too. Gypsy? Where is she? I saw her leaving on her skis. Cowboy didn't come back yet either. Gypsy and the cowboy. They deserve each other. Where do you think they went? Uh, probably went back to town. I'm going to get some soup. Should probably tell him about the robbery. I'll get the skis ready. We'd never catch him now. What are we going to do? I'll probably run into that blizzard pretty soon. And I'll either have to hold up or turn back. With a giant cave right near here. That's the only place they can't hold up. So how do you know about the cave? That's where I follow the cougar. All right. Let's try it. We beat the storm. Not a chance. Well, what do we do? We'll have to turn back. I knew it was too good to be true. I knew I'd never get away. Now, don't worry. We're not whipped yet. I know of a haunted cave not far from here. If you're not afraid of ghosts, we'll wait there till the storm blows over. Any time your broomstick is ready. Hey, Byron, knock it off. Hey, meathead, I'm hungry. Can't hear you, boss. Why not? He left? Huh? Where would that imbecile go? And don't ask me, boss. Maybe he's chasing that Indian squaw. You know, Jackson told me that the uh, Black Hills are sacred Indian country. Keep bad medicine for evil men from foreign lands. <laughs> they must have heard we were coming. We don't eat Byron. I don't think we need anybody.
Go back. Go back. I've come to help you. You can't help now. I gotta work fast. She's still alive? Yes, but she has no mind. Assume the position and open your minds wide. It's time for your cranial cavity search. Ah, uh, yes, my lords and ladies, the cranial cavity search. Here's a chance for you great geeks out there to prove your geek cred uh, by showing what you know. <laughs> And tonight's cranial cavity search question is... Charles B. Griffith, as I mentioned before, wrote the screenplay for the original Little Shop of Horrors. But besides writing the movie, he also appeared in the film. Which part did Charles B. Griffith play in the Little Shop of Horrors? A. The Screaming Dental Patient B. The Burglar C. The Voice of Audrey Jr., the man-eating plant Or D. All of the Above Ha <laughs> ha! Which part did Mr. Griffith play in The Little Shop of Horrors? You'll find out after these commercials expose you to The Horrors of Shopping <laughs> And the answer to tonight's cranial cavity search question. Which part, or parts, did Charles B. Griffith play in The Little Shop of Horrors? It was... D. All of the above. That'll teach you to keep your bill up to date, you deadbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Sniveling dog, go ahead and run. I'm glad I heard you. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, Don't try to snow me, Jim. 30,000 squares didn't come in here just to look for a plant. I want it. <laughs> I don't got no more money, honest. Believe me. Okay, let's try this. One, two, three, four. No, I ain't got no more money, honest. Eat me. Eat me. Look, chow hound. Don't bother me. I got problems of my own. Feed me. I'm sorry, pal. I'm a fresh out of blood. Talk to somebody else. Yes, my lords and ladies. The screaming dental patient, the burglar, and the voice of Audrey Jr. were all played by Charles B. Griffith. Now, originally, Mr. Griffith was only supposed to supply a placeholder for the voice of Audrey Jr. But he got so many laughs on the set that Roger Corman decided to keep his voice. And besides, Roger just didn't want to pay another actor. <laughs> but now, my lords and ladies, on to the conclusion of The Beast from Haunted Cave. As the spidery beast has taken captives, and the beast in the cabin is eating soup. Nice of the cowboy to leave these things laying around. <laughs> what are they? Very pistols. What are they for? They used to fire flares. They can be seen from miles away. They're going to signal anybody. Well, we can use them to light the cave, can't we? Okay. Small dog. Listen. We still got a chance. 
chance. Marty's coming. He knows the monster's here. He's gonna get it. They know. I made a very good guess. Stay here. Be careful, Gil. Watch out, girl! Ah! Ah, Marty! 
And so the bad guys got their comeuppance, the beast burned up in the cave, and all is right with the world. But, uh, what happened to the gold? It's all still back there at the cabin, right? Do you think Gil and Gypsy turned the gold into the police and told them all about the robbery? Or do you think they kept the gold and financed their own ski resort slash haunted attraction, complete with a Small Dove's Hot Milk and Graham Cracker restaurant? Hot milk and graham crackers. For me? <sighs> and a beast from Haunted Cave stunt show. Yeah! <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to invite you all back again next week when we'll do whatever this is all over again. <laughs> As always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, geek out.